Welcome, everybody. I am Margaret Clarkson. I'm the Commodore Columbia Sailing Club. It is an incredible honor that we are able to be a part of this today. It is incredibly important for the safety of boaters in the state of South Carolina, and it is a landmark bill for all of us. I just want to mention a couple of things. The kids that you see all on the water, they're not props. It's our summer camp program. <laughs> we, we have an incredible program here. We've got 376 kids from 7 to 17 taken sailing that, in that age group. And then we have a, a program called PB&J, and that's 4 to 8 years old, and that's 325 kids. So we have a long-standing commitment to teaching and helping with the aid of teaching sailing. And this is a perfect example. I'm so sorry it is no win because y'all would be able to see what it's really like when those kids take off and just have a lot of fun. So I, in addition to teaching uh, the sailing course, we also teach the DNR boating safety course here at our club. So we've been a long-standing part of this. And it's been a, a, it's a huge part of our mission to be very responsible on the water, not just for our kids, but for ourselves. We have a lot of adults that sail also. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Senator, to you. Yeah. <laughs> so thank you for coming. Um, thank you. I'm Senator Chip Campson. Uh, from Charleston County. I represent half of South Carolina's coast from Beaufort, from Port Royal Sound to, to Bulls Bay. And um, I am a lifetime boater. I, I obtained my 100 ton captain's license when I was 19 and operate big passenger vessels and offshore fishing boats. Um, and I authored this bill and I was a convert to really supporting a boater safety bill. I mean, early in my legislative career, I did not support one. Uh, and it's because when I, when I grew up in Charleston, well, everyone that was in Charleston was a Charlestonian. They weren't from off. Um, and growing up in Charleston is like growing up on a farm. You know how to operate a tractor. And if you grew up in Charleston, you knew how to operate a boat. And I really didn't see a need for it, um, but we have a lot of folks who do not have any experience, particularly in the ocean and in our estuaries. Um, and increasingly, we see that you know this is needed. And over time, I I, I became a big advocate for it. And um, and I I love boating. I love navigation. I operate a boat company, um, and and knowledge of the rules of the road, the knowledge of aids to navigation, is not something that you pick up unless you really study that. And boater safety, if you have to have a, take a course or get a license to operate a car with, where stop lights and flashing lights and yield signs tell you exactly what to do and where you have to stay in the lane, you certainly need to do that when it comes to a boat because you have to have all that in your head. And I'm going to advocate for a further study, those who want to take graduate level studies, uh, beyond the boater safety course, which is pretty rudimentary, Chapman's piloting, um, Chapman's seamanship and small boat piloting is the Bible. It, they call it the blue book. For some reason, mine is red, but um, I have actually four different Chapman's because I keep updating it and it was first published in 1917 and it's in its 69th edition the last edition was in 2020 and those of you who are boaters if you have not if you don't have a Chapman's you need to buy one there are three million in circulation and this is where you will really obtain some real significant and meaningful knowledge in how to operate boats and how to navigate and um, operate deal with compasses and all types of things. So I'd encourage you to do that. I'm going to finish with a quote from the oldest Chapman's edition I have, which is 1955. Now, I wasn't even alive in 1955, but this belonged to a Wabalaw shrimper whose, whose son was also a Wabalaw shrimper and taught me how to operate and maintain big boats. Um, it belonged to Owen Murray. And in this, 
chat, there's a quote in here that I want to read that Charles F. Chapman wrote. His first edition was in, 19, in, in 1917. This is a 1955 edition. If, if those interested in becoming adept at small boat seamanship will study the following pages and apply the information with a goodly amount of practice, they will learn to get a greater amount of enjoyment out of boating, not to mention the safety to themselves and others afloat. And nothing could be more appropriate than Charles Chapman's words that he wrote really in 1917 is when he wrote the first preface to this. And that's what this boater safety bill is about. Enjoyment afloat and safety afloat. And I pray that that will be the result. I'm very confident that will be the result. Thank you. Morgan Kaiser is next. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm in, oh, God. Sorry. Hi, y'all. I'm Morgan Kaiser. Um, I'm in no way a public speaker. I'm so sorry. I tried to write a speech for this today, but I couldn't. It was so emotional. I'm here because I am a, a victim of a boating crash. Three years ago, I was on a boat with my parents and a boat ran over us. And my father was sliced apart in front of me and my mother lost her leg and I took my dress off and tied it around her leg as a tourniquet. And ever since then, I've been fighting for this boating safety bill to pass. I've gone to several other states and gotten several are tons of statistics and I've been fighting for this. I've gone out to the State House every day. I love the people behind me. I would love to thank them on, in this speech, but I don't know if I can stand up in here anymore. I feel like an idiot. Okay. This is my mom, Sean yes. Kaiser. She lost her leg, and I took my dress off and tied it around her leg as a tourniquet because she almost died in front of me, and my dad did die in front of me very tragically. So I'm really happy this bill is being passed because I don't want anyone else to have to suffer. And the statistics show that this bill does save lives. So I just want to thank everybody that's behind me, the governor's office, the legislators, the Senate, and the House of Representatives, the media, and I, the families and friends, the, the law enforcement, and just thank y'all so much. I don't know. Nice cool afternoon, isn't it? My name is, my name is Randall Smith. I am the chairman of Boating Safety South Carolina. I'm the guy that uh, sent out all the letters on this. I'd like to thank Governor McMasters for coming. Just have to get right on it. Um, I'd like to also recognize Lieutenant Governor Pamela Evett standing behind me. Senator Campson, who spoke earlier. By the way, Senator Campson is the author and the primary sponsor of this legislation, and we owe him a lot of gratitude. <laughs> I would also like to recognize uh, Chairman of the Board of the Department of Natural Resources, Norman Pulliam, who's right here from the West. the director of the Department of Natural Resources, Robert Balls. Robert. And last but not least, I would like to uh, thank the Margaret Carlson Clarkson and the Columbia Sailing Club for offering their facility for this event. I'll 
also, there's too many more people here uh, to name all of them, but a general for all of our other distinguished guests, thank you for coming. At this time, I would like to recognize our special guest. And our special guests are 14 families who are here today representing their loved ones that perished in boating accidents. If you look around, you'll see them. They're wearing the white ribbons with a picture of their loved one. It took a lot of courage for these people to come to this event today. But after all, that's what this legislation is about. Um, my, uh, my involvement in boating safety goes back to 1997 when my son Drew was killed on this lake. As a matter of fact, last Wednesday, the 19th of July, was the 26th anniversary of his death. And uh, I thought we were going to wind up signing it on that day. So uh, it's been hard. But uh, my wife and I have stood in there with me. We fought. And uh, believe it or not, another date comes to mind, July the 3rd of 1999. I stood with then Governor Hodges at the State House as he signed the Boating Safety and Reform Act of 1999, also known as Drew's Law. Now here I am 26 years later with Governor McMaster signing this historic legislation. I would like to thank everyone that helped with this last legislation to get it passed. Yet some groups and individuals have criticized this legislation, saying that it restricted personal freedoms. I'm sorry. You have to get right on this thing. Right on it. I want to commend our legislators. I really do. They have a difficult job. Every day they have to balance personal freedom issues with what's good to protect the citizens of our state. Sometimes it's not easy. Most of the time it's not easy. I believe that if a new law is truly needed, and I emphasize truly needed, I will support it. I can re remember not too long ago, it was legal to drink a beer and drive a car in this state. I'm that old. That was outlawed for obvious reasons. A more recent example would be our new fentanyl law. Until the governor signed this law this past spring, there was no law on the books in South Carolina that criminalized trafficking in fentanyl. So we should, we should thank our, our legislatures. They have a hard job to do. A lot of times they get criticized for, uh, for the work. And it's only because people don't understand. I understand. Just as in 1997, when Drew died, at that time, there was no law on the books that addressed BUI. There was none. Or BUI causing death or serious bodily injury. I'm getting close to being finished. However, there were DUI laws. I'm gonna help you. Thank you. In 1997, if a person was intoxicated and killed someone while operating boat, they could only be charged with manslaughter. 
1997, the maximum penalty was five years in jail for manslaughter. But we had DUI laws in 1997. If you did the same thing in a car, you could serve up to 25 years in jail. And I asked why. Why is there a difference? Well, Drew's law changed that. Now, the penalties for BUI and DUI are equal, and they should have been all along. Today, South Carolina joins 46 other states that require voter education, and I know this law will help save lives. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to address, address all of you, and I'll turn it over to not sure who's next. Thank you, everyone. First, let's give a round of applause to all the families here today that have made this happen. Their efforts at the State House for the last 10, 15 years have been incredible, and I've, I've been lucky enough to be a part of this effort for the last couple of years. My name is Gaddis Brannon. I'm the president and CEO of the South Carolina Boating and Fishing Alliance. You know, we as South Carolinians love the water. Boating is one of our top recreational activities, and it's one of our top manufacturing sectors. You often hear our industry talk about balancing the economy and ecology. Far too often, we look over the importance of balancing recreation and responsibility. Today, this industry has come together with an amazing coalition of families to talk about the importance of saving lives, to ensure our laws improve public safety and enforce safe boating on our state's waterways. A very strong focus group of bipartisan legislators, who you see many of today, came together to write a law that will improve public safety and strict forcer boating laws and make our state's waterways safer. When we navigate through the waters with knowledge, respect, and preparedness, we ensure a thriving boating community for generations to come. We'd like to thank Governor McMaster. He is uh, the top outdoors governor in the country, and he's always working on outdoors issues, and we really appreciate him for that. Senator Kansen, we appreciate your leadership on this bill. I know Senator Davis isn't here today, but I'd be remiss if I didn't bring him up. He really worked hard on this as well. Representative Wooten wasn't able to make it either, uh, but I saw Representative Elliott here and, and many other legislators. I'd also like to thank my colleagues who are here today that made this bill happen and, and really just put in a ton of effort. Uh, Major Billy Downers here with the South Carolina Department of Natural Resources. Colonel Chisholm Frampton, and of course, Director Robert Bowles, the Kaiser and Smith families, and all the other families represented here. Your efforts and your energy and your steadfast attitude towards this cannot be unnoticed, and lives will be saved because of the efforts and the sacrifices that you've lived through, and we appreciate you. We really do. Thank you all so much for allowing me the opportunity to speak today. And with that, I'd like to turn it over to Director Bowles with the South Carolina Department of Natural Resources. Thank you. Good afternoon, Good afternoon friends. Thank you. hopeful too. Thank you. I'm hopeful, hopeful. too. Um, friends, this is, um, this is a bittersweet moment for a number of us here assembled. And so would you um, indulge me in just joining me for a moment of silence as we reflect on lives lived and lives lost. Thank you. Friends, good afternoon. My name is Robert Bowles. I'm privileged to serve as your Department of Natural Resources Director. I want to thank um, the Columbia Sailing Club um, for hosting us here at this wonderful venue. Our friends in the media, I'd like to thank you all for helping us get the word out about how critically important 
boating is in South Carolina and how critically important boating education is in South Carolina. I'd like to thank the passion and the vision of the families who've spoken before me and the legislative leadership and leadership of our governor, Governor McMaster, for bringing us to this day. Without your hard work and dedication, we would not be here. Friends, South Carolina has now over 361,000 registered boats, and this represents a nearly 21,000 vessel increase just in the past year. This doesn't include the thousands of canoes, kayaks, and paddle boards that are not required to be registered. The point I'd like to make to you all, and I submit to you all, is South Carolina is a boating state. South Carolina is a boating state. With this law, the passage of this law, and again, I thank the passion and the vision and the commitment from those who have fought for this, and I thank particularly our, our legislative leaders for bringing us to this day. Our voter education course that we will administer here at the Department of Natural Resources in South Carolina will be in two formats. There will be a free, there is a free in-person class taught by certified law enforcement officers working for the Department of Natural Resources. We also partner with important partners like the U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary and the United States Power Squadron to provide in-person classes throughout the state, including, as the Commodore mentioned here, at the Columbia Sailing Club. And we salute our partners. We thank our partners for the great work to promote safe boating in our boating state. If you would like to be educated a little more at your own pace, there is an online course available for a fee which allows you to learn at your own pace. You can save your place where you are in the lessons and you can return to that lesson at a time of your choosing and take the course at a pace of your own choosing. So we believe that this will be critically important to helping underscore the importance of boating and boating safety in South Carolina. And the bottom line is this new law will make a better educated boater, a better informed boating public, and we do believe, the Department of Natural Resources and our friends here assembled, that an educated boater is a safer boater. And with that, I'd invite you to look around this great vista here it's magical, isn't it? With this law, I believe we have arrived at a place where we can focus on vistas like this and we can embrace the magic and prevent the tragic. So thank you all to the friends here assembled, to our legislative leaders, uh, to the Sheriff's Association. But boating safety is a team sport. DNR cannot do it alone. Sheriffs have a great deal of time and money and sweat invested in this. So we thank them for their partnership, for the Coast Guard as well. And it is my distinct honor now to honor the memory of those who have fought so hard for this bill to introduce Oh, thank you for coming. As I'm standing here, I'm starting to think the only thing we have more of than, than boats is uh, gnats and heat. <laughs> Y'all remember, this is my favorite wife, Peggy. Glad you're here, Peggy. Oh, Y'all may remember Calvin Coolidge. He was, a, he was the president who didn't talk much, and he went to a dinner party, and the lady sitting next to him said that one of her friends bet her that she, she could not get him to say more than two words, a bet. He looked at it and said, you lose. <laughs> well, we are winning today, and the, the tragic circumstances that have brought us to this place are going to produce many sad anniversaries for many families, many tears, but they're also producing joy for people from here on out. So it was not in vain, and it wouldn't have happened without that, 
It wouldn't have happened with the great leaders that we have in our state legislature. We've got great people, and that is the best asset that we have in our state is our people. And that is why people from all over the world are coming here to invest hundreds of millions of billions of dollars and coming to buy places to live, sometimes second homes, sometimes even third homes, usually first homes. Everybody wants to be in South Carolina. And this, this, what we're doing today, what everyone here has contributed to, hoped for and prayed for, is going to make South Carolina even a better place. It already is the best place in the world, but this will make it even a better place for all of us to live, work, and raise our families. So thank you and congratulations. And with that, we will have a ceremonial signing of the very important bill. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Did everybody hear the question in terms of impact, or excuse me, the uh, causes of boating accident? The top three primary causes of boating accidents in South Carolina are failure to maintain a proper lookout, operator inattention, and operator inexperience. These are all things that can be addressed through our what we teach at Boater Education. More questions? More questions? Yes, sir. Yes, sir, thank you. The question was, how will the bill change the requirements? What this bill does is for everyone born after July 1st of 2007, so if you can do the math, that's 16 years old or younger, to operate a vessel in South Carolina will need to have proof of voter education. Again, you can get that through courses that we teach, that the Coast Guard teaches, that the Power Squadron teaches. Um, Senator Campson mentioned, Senator Campson is a master mariner uh, with a credential from the Merchant Marine, so we accept those things. The point here is to make sure folks know the rules of the road, what to watch out for, and an aquatic environment is very, very different than a highway or a road environment. So uh, bottom line is a born on date of after July 1st, 2000, if you're born after July 1st, 2007, you'll have to take that voter education requirement, voter education course in order to operate a vessel powered by an outboard motor of 10 horsepower or greater. What is something in the voter education that people will learn that is life-saving? Uh, I think one of the question was what, will, what is something that people will learn in voter education that is life-saving? Uh, I'll give you an example. File a float plan. We're here on the, uh, the great shores of Lake Murray. Uh, beautiful space. It's a big place. And um, a float plan filed with a family or a friend will enable law enforcement to begin their searches should something tragic happen. So that is just an example of something that will happen. The importance of personal flotation devices, wearing your life jacket, filing a float plan, maintaining proper course and speed. I can address, if I could address that quickly. Um, <clears throat> Uh, the answer to that question is exhaustive, really, because when it comes to, again, you draw an analogy to, to automobiles on a highway. There are lines that tell you you need to stay in this lane 
it's a no-brainer. But when it comes to boating, they're all type, they're called the rules of the road, and there's all types of rules. When you're passing, when two boats are approaching each other, depending on, there's a, da there's a, one boat has to give way right away to another boat, depending on where they are relative to the, to, relative to the operator of the particular boat. You have, you have aids to navigation. Most people have no idea what aids to navigation mean. What are those two blinking lights that are lined up with each other? And do I need to line them up? Those are range markers. Red buoys, green buoys. People don't, people don't know what side, whether I'm going south on the intercoastal waterway or north or I'm going inshore or offshore. It's completely different what side you, what side you are on those buoys, whether you keep your red, red right returning when you're coming in from offshore, the red buoys on your right. Then you hit a waterway marker the red buoys are on your, on your port side when you're going north. And there's all these rules that you have to know in your head. You can't pick up a rule book. There's no, you can't look at your iPad. Um, there are so many different scenarios. And so that's where the real danger is. People have no idea about the rules of the road. And then you have people who are trying to follow them. But the truth is, 80% of the people, 85% of people have no idea what the rules of the road are. So it doesn't work unless everyone's doing that. And that's exactly the type of training you get in the boater safety course. That, that, this is like, and, and it's really like a eighth grade kind of, it's a quickie, it's an eighth grade education. I mean, you want, a, you, want a, you want a college degree, study Chapman's. That's why I encourage everyone, you want to really have a postgraduate degree, study Bowditch. That's two volumes that thick. And so there's no end to, to your knowledge and, your, and what you can learn when it comes to navigating vessels. To me, that's one of the, that's, that's the beauty of it. I mean, anyone who's intellectually curious and interested to learn how to do celestial navigation, how to do radio navigation and operate a chart plotter properly and how do you actually adjust the deviation in a compass. There's all types of, there, there's no end to what you can learn when it comes to seamanship and it's seamanship, people that understand seamanship, understand the rules of the road, understand the aids to navigation, that's what's going to make boating safe. And that's why this bill is so important. And since you're up there already, yeah, my last question is, sure. why do you think it took so long and why were people in the legislature against this? Um, well, again, I, I changed my position on it, again, because when I was growing up, everyone knew this because we grew up in Charleston and everyone had boats. Um, but that's not the case anymore. Um, and so it took a while for people to come around. Um, we had tremendous bipartisan support. We had tremendous support. It, it unanimously passed the Senate. It ultimately in the House had only seven dissenting votes, I think it was, in the House. And we had some tremendous leaders step forward to get this through both of those chambers. And, and, and the, the family members um, of, of, of victims of boating tr fatalities have been lobbying for this for years. That had a big impact. I mean, they were at every hearing um, pretty much, and that had a really big impact in, on, on the General Assembly. But the, peop the notion that you don't need to know anything to operate a boat, no need to know anything, that's, that's absurd. It's, just, it's simply absurd because you, you have to know it all in your head. You don't, you don't have signs to tell you what to do when you're operating a boat. How long will the grace period be? Like, when will this be? It's enforced now. 60 days? Go ahead. The question was, when will this be enforced? The law goes into effect 60 days from the governor's signature. And, and let me say this. Um, not, excuse me, the official signature. So um, you, you all have maybe have seen some um, media coverage. Um, we put something out this week uh, to let folks know that 60 days, it'll be uh, effect in August. Um, I will let me say this. We've got some officers in, in green uniform. Um, folks in the, in the maritime community, the boating community, these are your friends. Um, nobody's out there trying to, uh, uh, to meet a ticket quota. Nobody's out there trying to, uh, to, to give you a difficult time on the water. Our interest in the Department of Natural Resources is your safety, your enjoyment of this magical place that we call South Carolina. So there is a great deal of officer discretion for these things, but to answer your question directly, 60 days from the governor's signature. 
That was that June the 19th? Yes, that was 60 days from August 19th. How are you going to deal with out-of-state voters who always say, oh, I'm from South Carolina, don't quote me on that. But um, <laughs> um, how are you going to deal with out-of-state voters who come and then don't know you from the We are going to do a lot of education, a lot of outreach. Again, I think it was referenced earlier, a number of 45 other states require voter education now. So what we would ask voters, if you're on the water and you're from out of state, please have that proof of your education uh, so that we can verify that and uh, send you on your day for a safe and happy time on the water. There's reciprocity. There's reciprocity from other states. So you come from another state, you have a voter safety certificate, you don't have to take another course. Yes. Yes. There are tickets and there are fines associated with that. I believe the uh, the penalty statute, Billy, fifty to three hundred dollars, depending on the seriousness of the infraction. So again, enjoy your time on the water. Please be educated. No one wants to give everyone a ticket. The point here is to raise the bar of understanding, as Senator Campson has so eloquently pointed out. Thank you very much.